Okay, so Northern Soul is directed by Elaine Constantine, who's a photographer turned director. And uh, uh, it's basically the story of uh, a young guy and then subsequently young guys uh, in the early 70s, Britain, leading sort of fairly miserable doer lives who discover that actually there is much more to the world. And they discover this through the magic of retro American vintage vinyl. Here's a scene from early on in the film. I have to say most of the clips we were given were actually just music. And it'd be lovely to just be able to play you some of the music, but that doesn't give you much of a sense there. Here's a, here's a clip from early on in the film in which he has yet to go to the, to the, uh, to the youth club, at which he will start to discover the ones of Northern Soul. Well, we've missed it. That arrived this morning, asking where we were. I've been down there this afternoon and had a word with Mr Banks. Are you refusing to get involved? I was proper shown up at that school today. Well, I've not encouraged any of it. He's becoming a weirdo. A recluse at his age. Recluse is a bit of a strong word, isn't it? You stay out of this, Dad. I want to warm my head up in this town. What about that youth club? Oh, Mum, I'm not going. Your cousin Lee's not scared of going there. Well, I'm not scared. What's your problem, then? So, uh, variously associated with us, so Lisa Stansfield, uh, Ricky Thompson, um, Christian Mackay, obviously Steve Coogan turns up. So there are is Ricky Thompson playing Ricky Thompson in that <laughs> yeah, clip? It certainly sounded as though he was. So the story is uh, this uh, kid, he goes along to the youth club and it's really boring and they're playing, you know, Melanie's uh, brand new key. That's a good and song, though. <laughs> the next thing that happens is that somebody... Well, put, it's not a good song. It's all right. It's brilliant in Boogie Nights. The sequence of, of Brand New Key and Boogie Nights is great because it's, you know, it, it plays so much against the sort of the innocence of, of Brand New Key. But anyway, what happens is... It did give us Brand New Combine Harvester, though. It so did, which yes. is an awful... Who are, who are, eh? Um, where was it? Oh, yes, fine. So he then he start, he he meets uh, another guy who's playing, who's into Northern Soul and starts uh, to dancing along to it. And the next thing, he's sort, of, he's sort of transfixed by this. And they say, look, let's get it together. Let's go out and start going to clubs. They start getting involved in the whole, you know, Dexedrine scene. They start tracking down uh, vintage vinyl. They've got this dream of going to America where they can actually buy their own records because this is at the point in which DJs would have their own records and they'd cover the labels like they're called cover-ups so that other people couldn't see what records they were playing. And uh, so there's... A, now, as far as the main narrative is concerned, it plays out pretty much as you would expect expect that he goes from being this sort of slightly dorky kid to somebody who's really into the northern soul scene get the clubs get bigger and bigger it starts getting involved in the drugs gets involved you know with a whole group of other people some of whom are clearly off the roads. you can pretty much chart the course of the narrative however the film has so much charm and so much authenticity that and i do not use this phrase lightly it reminded me to some extent of the charm and authentic authenticity of good vibrations which as you remember was my favorite film of a couple of years ago which did such a brilliant job of documenting the rise of good vibrations records and the terry hooley uh, uh, record shop and subsequently record label this is made and directed with a genuine feel for the music and for the culture uh, for a start, it gets all the the dancing and the music right. And it would be easy to say, well, the film is so charming because those records are so great. But that's not it. It's the way in which the dance hall scenes are captured. It's the way in which what the film does, and this is really, really difficult, is to convey to an audience what it means for those people who are caught up in that scene, what it means to them to hear those records, what it means to them to dance those records, what it means to wear those clothes, what it means to stand in that way with your head sort of looking up and this very sort of particular, there's a lovely sequence in which um, one of the guys explains to the other one how you basically do the dance. And he says, well, you know, step to the right, step to the left, and then you just twist your foot as you do it. And it's almost impossible whilst you're watching him doing that to not start to feel the lower half of your body joining in even when you're sitting in the cinema and watching it. I thought it was made with real care and love. It has a photographer's eye. It has a genuine authenticity. I mean, the narrative, as I said, is fairly straightforward and nothing that there's no sort of major point in the narrative that it's hugely surprising. And actually, despite the fact that there are all these kind of cameos in it, the people that really carry it through are the main cast, Elliot James Landridge, uh, Josh Whitehouse, Antonia Thomas, who are terrific as the two boys, and then this soul girl who kind of inspires their dreams and sort of, you know, gets them spinning and uh, and, and is, is the person with, you know, with, with whom our young hero is fixated. The music was right. The period detail was really well done. I thought it really captured the the magic of being in the middle of that scene and dancing to those records and and you know I, people imagine that this stuff is easy they imagine if you've got a great you're going to bang a great record on the soundtrack and just film some people dancing it's not it's really hard 
to explain to a cinema audience sitting down. I mean, like me, imagine me, stuffy suit, sitting down there watching this thing. And I was absolutely there in the same way that I was watching uh, watching Good Vibrations. I was there, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the Belfast Did you get up and dance? Scene. No, oh. I didn't. I, but I was dancing inside. That's not quite good enough, though, is it? Are you really don't want to see me dancing outside? I've seen you move and strut on a stage. Yeah, that's not dancing. I'm holding a double bass. That's a totally different thing. I totes can't dance. Is that right? Yeah, as uh, I think um, Phil Collins I think Phil Collins said. might have done that. He didn't well. say totes, but yeah.